welcome to Animaker Tips. My name is Ian Maigua and today we're going to be talking about the new Animaker Curve Tool. You see for a while I've been using the Multi-Move Tool to move my objects and characters in Animaker. But the problem with the Multi-Move Tool is when I'm moving my objects along a curved path, it tends to look kind of rough, especially towards the edges. So when I heard that Animaker released the Animaker Curve Tool, I decided to test it out and I have to say I'm really liking this tool because I can move any object that I want along the curved path and it looks very fluid as I do it. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the Animaker Curve tool in your explainer videos. So let's begin. Alright, the first step in order to follow this tutorial is to download the Animaker software. I've included a link in the description which is my affiliate link for Animaker. That basically means that if you decide to upgrade from Animaker's free account, to the premium account, Animaker Tips will receive a commission from the sale. This is no additional cost to you, this is just a great way to support the Animaker Tips blog. So when you're in Animaker.com, click on the sign up button. When you do, you'll see a place where you can put your name, your email, or if you want to save time, you can log in with your Facebook account or Google Plus account. Now when you've done all of this, log in. After you log into your Animaker account, you're going to see a big get started button. I need you to click on it. When you do, you'll see lots and lots of video templates. What we're going to do is we're going to click the first one, the one that says blank, click use. Once the project has loaded, you need to click on the background icon. When you do, we're going to scroll down until we see the city background. Once you find it, click on it. Now the next thing we need for this project is a character. So click on the character icon and then you want to click on the lady, the first lady right here. Alright, the next thing you got to do is you want to click on the gear icon that's on top of her head. When you click on it, you'll see a lot of pre-animated assets for this particular character. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down until we see the one where she's in that Superman pose. So keep scrolling, keep scrolling and there it is. Click on it. Alright, now that you've already clicked on the character, I need to tell you guys about the multi-move tool. Now, if you've never used the multi-move tool and you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to watch this video called the How to Animate a Walk Cycle in Animaker. In that video, I really talk about how to use the multi-move tool in detail. So if you are never used it before, you really need to watch that video. Now, if you've already watched that video, then you can continue watching this video. Now, the game plan for this video is going to be this. I'm going to show you how to animate an S-curve, an object following an, a curved path using the multi-move tool. Then I'm going to do the same thing, but this time using the Animaker Curve tool. At the end of the tutorial, you'll see that the Animaker Curve tool is the best tool to use whenever you're animating an object along a curved path. So let's continue. So basically what I'm doing right now is I'm going to take this character and I'm going to now resize it. So since she's going to follow a curved path, in my mind I'm going to make sure that she follows an S curve. So the curve that she'll be following will look like an S, okay? So as I've resized the object, then I'm going to go and click on the multi-move tool, which is right here. After clicking the multi-move tool, you're going to see a big start button, click on it. Then take your character and drag it just a little bit, then add a pin. You'll notice on the timeline, each time you add a pin, a small pin will appear in the timeline. Now the whole idea is to make the S shape. So I'm going to go through it quickly and it's, very, it's a very simple process. You move the character, add a pin, you move the character, add a pin, you move the character, add a pin. So you're going to keep doing that until it looks like an S. So I'm just going to speed through this. So you can see me just adding the pins. So as I'm speeding through this process, you'll notice that the character is following this S curve. That's very important. And just basically I'm moving it small, uh, small steps at a time because I want it to be as smooth as possible using the multi-move tool. By putting all these little small pins, I'm able to make sure that I really follow the curve of the S, which will make it look a little bit smoother than if I just chose to do one big pin and then stretch the character a little bit way too far and then add another pin. 
So that's why I did it this way. Now that I've finished adding all the pins to the animation, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the preview button to see what I have. Now, as, I'm, as we're watching this animation, you'll see that the character is following an S curve path, but it doesn't look like the whole body is turning around. It, the body's not rotating. I did that on purpose because my first priority is to make sure that it follows the S curve. Then after this, I'm gonna go back and start to rotate some of the pins that I already have. So what I'm doing right now is I'm resetting the pins. So I'm scrubbing through each pin and I'm starting to make some subtle adjustments. The key concept right now is I'm imagining how the S looks like. So right now, more towards the middle spot. So I'm turning the whole character 180 degrees and I'm doing that for the next pin. And now I'm starting to reach the bottom. So I'm gonna turn the character a little bit more vertically. And once I hit the bottom of the S, I've put the character back to its normal shape. So as I'm scrubbing through, you see it looks like an S. Now let's watch the video and see how it looks. As I'm watching the video, you'll see that the as the character is moving along that curved path, it looks kind of rough. Remember when I was saying that in the beginning of this video? That's what I meant. The multi-move tool, yes, can move the character along an S curve path, but it kind of sucks. So when I tested out the animator curve tool, you'll see that it's so much better. For this example, what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate the original scene. So to do that, you need to click this duplicate icon right here. Now when you're in your second scene, click on the character and a grid tab will pop up. Click the reset icon. After this, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the more options tab and then you'll see the curve icon. When you click on the curve icon, and press start, you'll see that the it already forms a curve. This is already helpful right now because remember when I was do, using the multi-move tool, I didn't know how the, I knew the, how the S curve looks like, but it would have been so much easier if I had an actual guide to follow. So with this curve tool already, they already have a, a nice guide that you can use. So I really like it. The second thing you need to use is you click on the actual curve and you'll see this option called auto rotate. Remember when I had to go back and start to rotate the character? Well, Animaker helps you out with this process because as I'm gonna be adding the pins, it'll automatically rotate the character. So I won't have to go and manually rotate each one of those pins again. So I started off the animation by bending the curve upwards so that way it forms the top part of the letter S. And basically what I'm doing right now is just adding those pins. So as I'm adding the pins, I'm forming it to look like the letter S. So I'm just making some adjustments, moving some pins around, even deleting some of the pins until it looks like an S. And once I'm done, I'm gonna go through it and just make sure it follows that arc. The whole idea is just to really make sure that it's smooth. Now that I'm done, let's play the video and see what we have. As we're watching the video, you'll notice right away it's very smooth. As she's going through the curved path, you'll see that it doesn't, it's not as rough as like the multi-move tool, which makes it so much better. And I'm really happy with this because this tool is going to be really useful for many situations. Maybe at one scene you might want to animate a boy on his bike going up a hill. Obviously if you use like the multi-move tool in that kind of situation, it will look kind of rough. But with the curve tool, it's perfect for that kind of situation. And there are so many examples where you can use this curve tool, but that's just one example. And that pretty much wraps up the episode. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And also, if you haven't watched my last video on the Animaker camera tutorial, you should definitely check it out because you're going to be using that tool quite a lot in your explainer videos. And if you have any questions about using the Animaker program, write the questions in the comment box below and I'll probably make a video on that topic. So that pretty much wraps up the episode and I'll see you in the next Animaker Tips tutorial.